the big reveal of one of the most revolutionary boats of the year. The designer says it could one day soon sail over 900 miles in 24 hours. This is Gitana 17, a 100-foot fully foiling trimaran built for Baron de Rothschild and designed incredibly to be sailed solo. We spoke to her designer, Guillaume Verdier. The idea was to make a boat that is capable to, you know, foiling is not that difficult, but going foiling on, on the um, stable in waves is a lot more difficult. So this is a first step in that direction. We had uh, the chance to, to have a model of a 70 footer with a Mod 70 and make, you know, make these ideas real by building a big foil on, on the Mod 70. We were experimenting with different types of foils. We started with the classic foil of, of, of the Mod 70 and then we extended it and then we made, uh, we made more L shape and the L shape was cavitating. So we went to some uh, bigger, bigger and thinner sections and, uh, and progressively we, we got a full foiling. Previously the boats were were designed to go offshore and then you know slowly the folds got got into there and and now um, we designed let's say the appendages uh, a principle and and tried to have the platform that goes well with that so it it makes a platform that is a little heavier than usual uh, because there's more system to control the fold there's more hydraulic and the platform is is stiffer in torsion uh, so making all that together is, is you have to see it as a global concept, not not tr trying to see things in, in, in independent one from each other. Well, let's go back one step and ask why it is a trimaran, not a catamaran. Right, a catamaran would perform better actually. You know, a catamaran is is more of an ultimate machine. Um, it would be perfect if you had full automatic control and you never touch the water. The reality is very different. Uh, you come and, and sail sometimes in six, seven meter wave, perhaps eight meters. And in that case, a catamaran could be really, really hard. And once you touch both hulls um, in the water with a catamaran, maybe it will become really difficult uh, single-handed to, uh, to uh, um, control the boat. So um, we thought the catamaran would be really difficult to to steer and, and, and behave in. For one person? For one person in oceanic uh, system. We introduced um, an elevator. It's like a, an horizontal foil below the main dagobot, so the dagobot which is on the main hull. And uh, that, uh, that kind of big uh, horizontal foil, like a, like a rudder in a way, um, is helping us a lot into the roll control one of the issues we had when we were foiling with the Mod 70 is that it was fairly unstable rolling, rolling wise. And uh, if we only had the elevator on the stern, it would have been better, but uh, not enough for, for single-handed control. So we, we introduced that element that, that is draggy, but that will help a lot in, in, in what we look for. The T rudders that we see behind they were um, engineered by uh, Romaric Neusser and uh, Julien from Gitana team. And uh, the point of those is, is to be able to, to lift up and down so that we can, we can totally lift up the windward foil, which is very exposed to the waves when you're reaching. And you don't want to have this um, slammed by a wave. And uh, we can clamp them in the hull and disconnect the system. The second thing we can do is, in case we hit something, uh, um, a floating object, it can kick up, which would be really bad for the elevator, but at least we won't lose everything. Um, so there's, there's a kind of uh, complex system to do two things that were developed. Uh, and the foil itself uh, is, is a bit like the AC-72 kind of foil. So um, quite auto stable, so it, it, it behaves a bit like a winding uh, when you go up and down. Uh, when, when the boat uh, raises above the water, it takes more leeway because it takes more leeway. There's a component of the force that 
push you down. So it's it's a bit like an helicoid uh, movement. Um, so that that system that was discovered in 2010 or 2011 when we worked at Team New Zealand um, of self stability, we use it as well here. Um, but it's a big foil. It's uh, the difference is that it's it's a huge foil compared to any other boats in the past. So so the gain we could make on on those boats will be uh, about uh, 14 knots of true wind speed will will allow us to foil. So then then you can foil as long as as you've got you know wave system that is not too much of a problem and. The thing we've tried to design is to make a bow that, whether it falls or not, is still a good shape. So we don't we try to minimize the risk uh, of, of falling or not falling. Before 15 knots of true wind speed, we are not too handicapped, and we try to do so that when we have too much of a bad weather system, when not, not when falling is not possible anymore, it's still a bow that behaves correctly. So uh, it's it's trying to do a bit everything, but uh, uh, that's that's been the main complexity of in, in the design of that boat. And what sort of speeds do you anticipate that the boat will do, foiling and not foiling? So when when foiling, you know, we are all limited by cavitation when we go really high. So if we wanted to go above, uh, let's say, 50 knots, we need to have different kind of profiles. So let's say above 15 knots, we go into a bit uh, unknown territories in terms of uh, cavitation. Maybe we should be able to do 54, 53, I don't know. Um, the, we'd need to improve the aerodynamic aspects uh, of the platform as well to do that. It will, it will be done slowly. Uh, we first have to validate the structure of the boat and make sure we are all pleased. Um, but uh, yeah, top speed is will not be incredible you know like uh, any but but uh, it's the average high speed that we want to to raise I, I, I could say any stupid numbers but i'm not well give us a stupid number that you think is possible in 24 hours on this boat uh, I, I guess you could you could you could make uh, maybe 900 miles you know i don't know yeah it's it's pretentious to say, we have to, to wait a little.